Hello everyone, the small PCBs I'm holding in my hand has a radio transmitter in it. Therefore, when you look at the manual, you can't help but noticing that there, it complies with radio equipment directive, or in short, RED. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of you who are familiar with the videos in our channel design products and perhaps already you have radio transmitters or receivers in your products or perhaps in the future you will include these. Therefore, it means when you or your company sell these products to the European Union and the UK, the product must comply with radio equipment directive. Do you also know that radio equipment directive, in order to comply with it, the product must also meet the safety requirement, EMC requirement, and also the radio performance requirement. If, if your answer is no, then this video is for you. I'm not an expert in radio equipment directive, therefore I have selected a few bits from the presentation that Michael Darby, technical director of Element, did a few years back for the EMC and Compliance Conference. And I put them together and give you this episode, which is an introduction, the basics of radio equipment directive. And I hope you enjoy this episode and give us some feedback. Enjoy. What defines a radio equipment or when does the radio equipment directive apply to your product? Well, if your product has any radio function within it, whether that's a transmitter, a receiver, or a transceiver. And the frequency range of that radio is up to 3000 gigahertz, and that's down to any frequency. Then it's a radio. And maybe it's uh, you've designed it to be a radio, or maybe you think you've made a product and you've put somebody else's radio into it. In either case, it is therefore radio equipment, because it's a piece of equipment with a radio feature inside it. Now, if you look inside the radio equipment directive, there are some types of radio equipment which are specifically exempt from the red. For example, if you have radio equipment which is only for national defense or military use and, and can't be used um, in un any other situation, um, then that would be exempt from the red. Um, and there are a few other exemptions, but for the most part, for commercial and business and domestic uh, radio equipment, the radio equipment directive applies. Okay, so the radio equipment directive is a trade directive. It's not a technical document. If you start looking in the radio equipment directive, you won't find terms like megahertz or DBM or watts. You won't hear tests. You won't hear spurious emissions, ESD, frequency tolerance. You won't hear a spectrum mask. And even uh, it doesn't mandate that you test. The directive is a document which allows radio equipment to be placed freely on the European Union um, and to provide a harmonized approach to putting the radio equipment on the market. And it also clearly specifies the responsibilities for manufacturers, importers, distributors, etc. However, within the radio equipment directive, there is a requirement for a technical assessment of the radio equipment. And this is referred to as the essential technical requirements. It's in Article 3 of the Radio Equipment Directive. So that's about as technical as the red gets, where it tells you um, that the product must have a technical assessment. And it breaks those into um, different parts. Article 3 is split into three parts, and I'll come on to that in a moment. There's one authorization route for compliance with the red, and that's a declaration of conformity. There is no certification for the red. So what sort of assessment is required um, to meet the radio equipment directive? Well, first of all, product safety, and that's any safety aspect of the product. And that's covered in Article 3.1a. And EMC performance, which is covered in Article 3.1b. So that refers to the EMC emissions and EMC immunity of the whole product, including the radio link. Article 3.2 is the radio performance. And then Article 3.3, I'm just calling it other categories at this time. OK, so the radio equipment directive 
It is a declaration of conformity directive. The manufacturer declares compliance with the red. Now, only the manufacturer can compl compl uh, declare compliance or sign the DOC. But who exactly is the manufacturer? Well, the directive encourages it to be the actual product manufacturer. So if you are the company who design and develop and manufacture the product, you are the company who knows that product the best. And the radio equipment directive encourages that company to perform the compliance assessment. Now, if you design and manufacture a product and you have an idea for a product, but you subcontract the actual soldering and construction part to perhaps a factory in the Far East, for example, then the factory in the Far East does not become the manufacturer. They're just soldering the parts together that you've told them to solder together. The person who or the company who developed and designed and worked on that product and brought it to uh, fruition, they are the manufacturer. However, from a legal point of view, it's the company whose company name or brand is on the product. They are the legal manufacturer. So the declaration of conformity is always created and signed by the company whose name is on the product. And in most cases, that is actually the manufacturer. But it's important to note that if one company rebrands somebody else's, or if you manufacture a product for somebody else, then it's the company whose name is on the product who must sign the declaration of conformity and take the legal responsibility. There's also legal responsibility on the importer and distributor. If the manufacturer of a radio equipment is outside the EU, for example, in the USA or China or the UK, then an importer in the EU is required. You don't need an authorised representative in the EU under the Radio Equipment Directive, but some company is going to be importing that device and putting it on the market. And they need to add their company name and address and contact details to your equipment, either to the equipment itself or more likely to the packaging. And they take legal responsibility for the product they import in addition to the manufacturer. And also if any other company distributes the equipment around the EU. So for example, if you've got a manufacturer who manufactures a product, maybe they're in the UK, they sign the declaration of conformity. The product then gets imported into the EU, let's say for example, in the Netherlands. So the importer at the first place that it reaches the EU, they are responsible for the importation of the or compliance of the uh, product they import. And then a company who distribute it, distributes it around the EU is also responsible for the compliance of the product that they provide. OK, so one declaration of conformity document applies to the final product, and that DOC covers all aspects of the device. So in a lot of cases, only one directive may seem to apply, but in reality, it might be more than one. So for radio equipment, a lot of the time, the ROS directive, the Restriction of Hazardous Substances directive, would also apply. And if it's also a machine or a medical device or a, a toy for a very young child, then additional directives may apply. And all of the applicable directives must be listed on the one declaration of conformity with the one signature. And as a reminder, there's no red certification. There are other directives where a, a type approval is required, but the red is not one of them. So let's say, for example, you have your radio equipment. And as I mentioned before, this product needs assessment for safety. And that's looking at the safety of the radio performance, but also of the non-radio modes or the other functions of the product. It covers EMC of the radio pro the part of the product and of the non-radio parts. The radio assessment, and that's all the radios in the device, transmitters, receivers, transceivers, and of course in the future those other parts of Article 3.3. If there is another directive that applies, such as machinery or medical, then of course you'll also be assessing that, but under a completely different directive. So all those parts of the red will combine to meet a compliance to the red. So the manufacturer will be able to declare compliance with the red 
based on the safety, EMC, radio and any other parts in the red. If other directives apply, such as the ROS or the uh, machinery or medical, then those directives will be met. And then finally, one declaration of conformity by, from that manufacturer will reference all the applicable directives.